just want to take us back a little bit. Um, the average age here, I'm sort of guessing, is over 40. There's plenty of sprinkling of young people in the audience. We were asked before lunch to think about, could you remember life before, before the European... Over, over 40s would remember life outside the EU. I'll come back to that. But most of you in this audience will remember life before the web. Um, and when the web started... Uh, back in 1990, when Tim put the first website up, I remember people saying all the time, how, how can I trust what, anything that's on it? I don't know who's written it. I don't, I don't, they're not checked. They're not, I mean, as if we trust what's in the papers or as if we trust every book that we read. But there was somehow about those systems had ways of being published, editors, uh, uh, publishing organisations, and the TV broadcasters had ways of sort of self-regulating, where well, we all know that isn't the case, but that's what people, that was the idea. And if you put something on the web, how would you know to trust it? How would you know how to trust any of it? And as Wikipedia started to emerge around about the turn of the century, it was just dismissed as, well, it's just rubbish. There's not, not much in it, and how can we know that it's right? And of course now, we, uh, it is, it's the, we live by it, uh, can you imagine life without Wikipedia these days? And um, it has its own system of self-regulating because everyone's allowed to edit it. There's an awful lot of it. And, it, of course, there are controversial pages, but the information that's in there, we largely trust we, because we can see who's edited it. And it's created its own sort of regulatory system. And it's... You know, when the web, again, when the web first started, it was, there was no issue of accountability, and it was really um, a free-for-all. Anyone could put something up, and when it started, it was read-only. Then the browsers became more interactive, and we, people started writing blogs uh, and took on a life of their own, and then the social networks started to emerge. And these are very recent phenomena that seem these days to completely dominate our lives. Facebook it uh, started in 2004 and for two or three years was used by university students. Twitter started in 2006. This is only 10 years ago. But, but since then, they ha it's become to dominate our lives, even though they're only used by really quite a small percentage of the population. And actually, Obama is credited as being one of the, the Obama elections of 2008 and 2012 are credited as being one of the things that pushed people into the microblogging site, Twitter, one of the things that helped Twitter to emerge. Um, he used that media very effectively as he rode to victory in 2008 and even more effectively in 2012. And uh, observers of the web have analysed that data and are continuing to analyse the data. So here we are in 2016. We've had Brexit and all the analysis shows that the social media conversations the day before the Brexit vote were very much towards leave, positive towards leave. Even though the polls were showing maybe remain or too close to call. Now, the, the issue about un analysing this is, of course, as I said, it's not a statistically significant sample. We're not sampling here with social media. And in fact, as was pointed out before lunch, uh, really, it's the, it, was all, it was the over 40s largely, that voted for Brexit um, uh, in, in a big sense. And, but the, um, uh, the youngsters use social media more. Maybe they don't use Twitter. But there's a lot of people analysing. And all, so far, all the results are that the conversations were showing that it was going to be a leave uh, win. It was going to be Brexit. Now, we look at Trump and Clinton and look about how do you, how do you think about how to trust politicians uh, these days and what they say um, and we, we are looking, as a lot of research groups around the world are, at analysing the social media, we're observing what's going on, and storing the data so that we will be able to pour over this endlessly in the future. And I'm afraid to say that yesterday, the conversation was all positive for Trump in terms of uh, the way the, what, where the, where the um, emphasis in the conversations were. It's far too complicated to say that means he's going to win, but the other detection we had was that a, a lot of the tweets coming out from the Clinton camp were possibly bots, robots, pushing out the tweets. And it's something to do with the, the passion. Now, maybe the polls are showing that uh, Trump's down, and maybe they're just pushing harder. We won't know until tomorrow, and, and um, I'm sure many of us think we know 
what well, not think. Many of us have a wish as to how it will turn out. But um, the, we are going to be poring over that social media. Now, is social media changing democracy? Uh, and our confidence in our politicians and the uh, we trust, do we trust what they say? Is it them saying it? Um, the one thing that I'm afraid is not certain is the future of the internet as a whole. And um, so uh, how social media has been around, it's a blink of an eye in terms of civilization, 10 years. That's nothing in terms of the way we've communicated and built democracies over time. The future of the internet is not a certainty. There could well be a fragmentation of the internet. There have never been more pressures on the internet. You've got cybercrime and security, maybe the weaponization of the internet. That was all in the press last week. The internet of things coming with all the security problems that brings, as we saw again with the um, attack on the uh, websites two weeks ago. And you've also got pressures on the geopolitical pressures of countries wanting to develop their own internet. So we could end up with many internets rather than one. So there's no certainty in the world of the internet, uh, but the, uh, for sure, we're all going to pour over the data that comes out tonight to understand how social media is influencing the way we vote in our general elections. Thank you. Thank you.